Now you can actually show either one of these, okay? It may read like it's one product. Either one will work. Um, well, let's do this in a Fisher projection. Methyl at top and bottom. We got a methyl on each carbon. It doesn't matter which is the ground. I'll say over here, I reckon. If this is the ground, uh, the top carbon, the, the carbon closer to the ground has the chlorine, the carbon further away from the ground has the OH. Uh, on the ground here, things in the plane we can look at going away. With the OH going away, what size is the methyl on? OH going away, the methyl is on the, on the right. The ethyl is on the left. Okay, with the chlorine going away, what size is that methyl on? With that chlorine going away, the other methyl is also on the right. Yeah? What's on the left? I drawn hydrogen, yeah. Everybody good? Who did not get that, receive that? I just have a question. When you say, like, if something is going away, how do you know where to put it at the top of the bottom? What do you mean? How do I know if the OH is the top and the chlorine at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Instead of the chlorine at the top. Because of the ground. And we said that. I, I said the ground's over here. I could have said the ground's over here. It, it doesn't matter. But if the ground is over here, which one of these is closer to the ground? Chlorine. This is just this is just the actual ground turn. Consider me standing here and somehow you turn me and now the ground is here and I'm like this. But all this what we're doing is taking all this and we're drawing it like this with the ground down here. See that? If I put the ground over here, carbon with the OH would have been closer to the ground. But as done, the carbon with the OH is away further away from the ground. The carbon with the chlorine is closer to the ground. Now of course I sit on the ground and I look through here for the top carbon. That is, my feet are on the ground, like I'm laying on the sofa here, the OH is going away, going straight up away from me laying here. This methyl is bolded, that means it's coming to my right. Uh, how did I look at this? I stood over here. That is, the ground is still here, my feet are still on that ground, but now I'm hovering up here, and with the chlorine going away, and here's the carbon, the chlorine's going away, that side's enough alone if I'm over here. It's going behind the board, that's my right. So with the chlorine going away, the methyl's on the right. With the chlorine going away, which that's what that means, the methyl's on the right. There it is. But we've got to put the methyl at the top and the methyl at the bottom, and we sort of rotate both. That methyl goes up, the OH goes over here, ethyl comes here, if this methyl comes down, chlorine goes here, and the H goes here. And there it is in a Fischer projection. But guess what? You also get what in this reaction? Plus an antimer. The other one, yes. But if you do Fischer of this, You'll have the OH and CL on the other side. So you can do it. It'll, it'll mirror that. Your, your product had it over here? Well, you, you, you drew that one. And that's OK. The question does not really, I, I could clarify the question. It could say either an antimer is acceptable, or you only have to draw one. Typically, these questions are you. 
unless it says both, it's common to do this, to show one and then to show an antimer. The antimer is the mirror image where everything's reversed, that would be quite acceptable. Um, this question did not ask if it was a Rito or a Trio. <coughs> Does this reaction give a Rito or Trio? It's this, which is a Rito. But what's the enantiomer? Also a retro. The mirror image of a retro is a retro. So, does this reaction give three of? It does not. This reaction is thus diastereoselective. It only gives one diastereomer. The erythro diastereomers, it's actually two of them, so diastereomers. The three O diastereomers are not formed. Because, how many possible stereoisomers from this compound? In theory, four. Two carbon carbons, two to the two is four. Do you get all four in this reaction? No, you only get two. And they're called the erythro diastereomers. It's a DL pair. You do not get the other DL pair. The other DL pair would be called 3O. You do not get that because the reaction is there's some selectivity in the way the reaction occurs. Okay? Because it's backside attack. Chloronium ion. <coughs> you see, you got the alkene. It attacks chlorine back bonds, and you end up with. That's the chloronium ion where it reacted at the top. But then the water comes in, attacks here. Same place you'd have cation if you had cation, but it back bonded here. But if the chlorine is bonded straight up, how does this come in? Straight down. Straight down. And the new bond is going to be straight down if that's what you had drawn here. Now if the chlorine was shown back, how would the water come in? Run. That's a little more difficult. I suggest you turn it and put the new things straight up and down. To me, that is easier. Now, if you can do it some other way, it doesn't matter. If you can get that answer, whatever way you want to do it is fine. If you don't like my method. If you know another method that works for you, great. Right. So when we did the practice, um, probable, yeah, the practice problem on our purple sheets would be, um, I iodine and chlorine, and you said the nucleus go up. Should you just think that way in order to organize our thoughts when it comes to um, trying to drop the from it? Does that make sense? Because. Well, I mean, that's what I'm telling you. New, new things, I would recommend putting them straight up and straight down. Oh. Turning it sets your steric chemistry already. New things straight up, straight down. Because to me, you're going to get. So many more problems and issues trying to put new things front and back. Now, again, if you want to do that, you can do it. But there will be numerous issues and pitfalls. And to me, this is the easier way to do it. But probably no book does it this way, so I don't know, you may be, you're never going to read this, met, this okay. Um, books are going to tell you all these things, but I guarantee you, I'm going to say, well, you didn't think about that, you didn't think about this. And it's going to open up a big can of worms. Yes. So I did the same thing, I just flipped it. Is that still okay? You flipped what? Like the methyl or, or the alcohol. What do you mean, here? No, I like said side. No, I meant like on this one right here, that one, yeah. So I flipped it completely like up, like upside. So like that methyl is on the other side and that like. Well, methyl's a methyl. So you're telling me the OH is. But no, they're on the same side. I just flipped it. So your OH is. So basically, what the chlorine and hydrogen is on the bottom is at the top, and your um, hydroxyl is on the bottom, and your um, ethyl is on the bottom. Right. Your OH is on the bottom, and chlorine is up yeah. here. Yeah. Is that still okay? Because when you count the carbons, yeah, so it's okay because 
both in antimers are here. You would get, you would be wrong if you had to distinguish between an antimers because flipping it, basically you just took this and flipped it over. This methyl is now this methyl. But think about it. Right now this methyl is going away from you. Right? It's up there and it's going away from you. That pin is going away. If I flip it, now the methyl is going forward. So as you're looking at it, you now have to assume that methyls are going forward. <coughs> but the fissure means that they're going back. So you cannot just flip this like this. Doing that gives you the mirror image. And again, in this case, it's actually okay because either, either works. But you could get messed up at some point with other types of questions. All right? Understand? If this is going back and you're telling me you just, you just sort of do this, well, now that could be coming forward. But if I came along and looked at it, I would think it was going back because that's what you're supposed to think when you look at the picture. Okay, question? So how do you know that that's where the ground like is supposed to be rather than the other side? It doesn't Maybe. matter. You do it either way. But wouldn't that flip it? Or it would mirror it? It's yes and no. It would still work in this. Uh, yes, it would. Yes, it would flip it, but the groups would then be on the other side. So the methyls would still be in the same spot, but the uh, uh, these two would then be over here. Okay. Okay. No, you can do this over here. I'll do it over there real quick. We need move on. If it was over here, if anybody did that over here, we can do fissure there. You want the OH near the ground. We've got two chiral carbons. You want the OH on this carbon, the one close to the ground. Okay, if the OH is going away, the OH is going away, what side is the ethyl on? The OH is going away, ethyl is on the right, correct? And the methyl is on the left. With the chlorine going away, what side is the methyl on? On the left. And it's undrawn H. Okay? And if we rotate those, and we want methyl at bottom and methyl at top, That would just put methyl up here. That moves chlorine over here, H here, yeah. Uh, methyl at the bottom, OH here, and ethyl here. There you go. You see it's erythro. It's the same, it's the same thing. It is erythro. So that's just as correct? I mean, all answers about this are going to be the same. It's just like I've, I've got the hand drawn like this. Okay, there's a hand there. Is that the left hand or right hand? Left hand, okay. How about now? I just flipped it over. It's still left hand. There's nothing different about you can describe. Any descriptors are going to be the same thing. That's the same as one of those. Which one is it? Uh, is it... Is it this one or is it the enantiomer? Uh, there we go. Is that this one or is it the enantiomer? Now you've got to now you've got to flip it to C or something. If I just did this, not flip it this way, but if I just rotated it, that would be the OH here, right? I think these are the same, aren't they? Are these the same? I mean, this this would have been a correct answer. 
Because guess what? You got enough at the top and enough at the bottom. You had a choice here because you had two methyls. If I had said put the ethyl at the top and the methyl at the bottom, then the ground would have had to have been a region. Yeah. But as, as given, you can have the ground either side because okay. they're both methyls. And a methyl is a methyl. Okay, this, this, that question is sort of the advanced question here. It's pulling everything together. All right. Uh, mechanism question, yeah? Uh, I saw a lot of trouble here. Some of you just not getting going. Then there's, there's more practice on the stereochemical page warm-up. Very first page of one of the handouts at the bottom. There's three or four down there. And I sent that key out, I believe, yesterday. I did not send it out earlier. Mechanism, sulfuric acid. What's going on here? It looks like we're making this ring over here. Everybody agree? Uh, we got oxygen now binds to carbon. Have we ever had an oxygen make bond to carbon? Yes. I mean, in the previous reaction, we had an OH bonded to the carbon. Uh, what type of reactivity do we have out here? It's a benzene ring. It's, it's not an alkene. No reaction here with any, anything we ever do. No reaction in organic one here. The alkene is here. Also, the benzene ring is still there. It did not react. Uh, although that's not the best way to look at it because it couldn't react and then reform. Chemistry's out here. Uh, alkene, H plus. The only reaction we know is this attacks the H plus. We're originally kind of that, right or left? Left. So we get this. OH. Boom, 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 boom. New H there, cation here, two methyls here. Okay, to make a ring. This is going to attack something to make a ring. We looked at examples of like this. The tetrahed hydrocannabidol reaction. The OH attacks and makes a ring. Yeah? Uh, does the oxygen attack here? No, that would be a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven member green. We're making a six. Secondary cation here. Hmm, what are cations prone to doing? Rearranging. What can we do here? Alkyl shift. Methyl shifts over. H on the end if you want to keep it drawn in. Then one of these methyls shifted over to here. One remains. The cation is now there. Now we have a tertiary carbocation. At this point, now the nucleophile, the thing with the electrons that likes the positive charge, this can now Tag and make bond. What size ring we're making now? Oxygen, carbon, 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 carbon. It's a six membered ring with one oxygen in the ring.
turn this uh, a little bit. I mean, it's these two groups are adjacent to each other. Later on, you'll call that ortho. We got the oxygen and the carbon. But this had to uh, come over here, and the oxygen attack is carbon. The carbon that it attacked has a methyl on it. It also has coming off that carbon this, which is a <coughs> get rid of that. See, that kind of makes it look a little strange. Coming off that carbon is a methyl, but also a what? Isopropyl. Isopropyl. Yeah, there's a new H on one of those carbons. Yeah? There's still an H here. There's one lone pair there that's a positive charge. And how do we get home? Something needs to take that. We have an exact acid over there. We can use. Bisulfate anion. These electrons take H, these electrons stay behind, and we get product and we reform sulfuric acid. You can also use water to take the H because it's an aqueous acid and you can just form H3O. Uh, 
Water will take an H from a positive oxygen, but not from a neutral oxygen. You took an H from a neutral oxygen. If the H is on a positive oxygen, it's much more acidic. Uh, just, it's not good. You're only going to do what you get under strongly basic conditions. You need a strong base to do that. Are we under strongly basic conditions? No, we're under strongly acidic conditions. Another golden rule here is, if you're under strongly acidic conditions, all your charges are going to be positive. If you're under strongly basic conditions, all your charges, I'm talking about your organic substrate. Basic conditions, they'll be negative. Look at my organic. Did I ever make a negative on that? Well, really, the only, you can have negative like chlorides, or positives could be sodiums. But I, did I make any anions up here anywhere? Everything's positive. That's a trend under acidic conditions. See, you, you, you generated a negative, didn't you? Mm -hmm. That's kind of breaking the golden rule. Of just, you're not going to make negatives under acidic conditions. Except for, we did make a negative. I have a, a sulfate negative up there. The only negatives you can, you're going to make are negatives of strong acids. Okay. If you've got HBr, isn't that a strong acid? Well, you do have a negative. You've got Br minus. But that's the conjugate base of a strong acid. And by definition, it can exist in the acidic conditions. Um, it's sulfate minus, but you're not going to have that minus. Okay. Uh, that's something that you see as a trend. I usually point that out in organic two. That can be done a little bit. Charges here are positive. Um, okay, uh, test all on Monday. Question? I was confused about how, like, how that oxygen ends up in the place it does when it looks like the carbon cation forms on like, the third or fourth part in that. Check it here. You okay with the melting shift, the alkyl shift? Yes, I get that. Okay. Well, this is just attacking. Just like this hand attacking here, making a ring. Well, what size ring is it? Oxygen. All this is going to be in a ring here. See this ring? Oxygen, carbon. After the oxygen, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. After the oxygen, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons in total of the ring. We could also, maybe it would help to redraw that. We did, we did a couple of examples of this in class. One of them was we did, the other one was the THC homework. Okay? And just, just for studying techniques is when we do a certain problem, there's sort of the expectation that you're going to say, what's going on here? What type of questions do I need to ask here? Do I see what, what we're doing? Uh, the material was presented as a ring-forming reaction, so it seemed kind of important. That was the idea that we were looking at. So we looked at some ring-forming reactions. Um, all this can rotate. This has free rotation, OK? All this can do this. Free rotation. We could redraw this. And also, I'm kind of turning this a little bit. I'm drawing things this way instead of that way. Here's the OH. Here's the aromatic. What if instead we draw this like this? Carbon, carbon then carbocation, and the carbocation has a methyl and an isopropyl. What if we just flip this up like this? Can you see it now? These electrons add right there? Yes. It's the same as over there, I just didn't turn it up. Right? These electrons make that, and what size ring are we making here? 
one, two, three, four, five, six. When this becomes connected, there's your six-membered ring. And that's just shown here. What bond did we just make? Sometimes we can highlight the bond. Didn't we just make the O carbon bond? Right here. O the carbon bond. There's your six-membered ring. Now, once the oxygen becomes positive, now we can remove the H. Yeah? As opposed to removing the H earlier. You see it now? Yes. Question. We call this a intramolecular reaction. The oxygen is intramolecularly attacking the carbocation. Can we do, like, instead of attaching it, that both end of um, what's this of the ring? Can we, since it's pulling it there, can we pull it going up instead in line? Because I can't see it attaching, like all of that attached to. Attached to the where the hydrogen uh, hydroxide is, it's like they're attaching on the top of the benzene ring instead side by side. Like they go in on the top. Is that still going to be the same uh, with, uh, outcome? I'm not sure I understand. You. It's like like just drawing it straight up rather yeah, than going so out. Yeah. Like you twisted it so that it would go sideways. The same thing. Just draw it straight up. We're going to take all this and just turn it like that? Yes. Yeah. Same thing, yeah. Yes. Do you have the same product at the end? It doesn't matter how you draw the, draw the compound. I mean, I've got it drawn with the two rings going this way. If, if at the end, well, at the end, I would not redraw the product. I would just do something and show an error to this. But, I mean, even if along the way you've got it turned, Along the way, you're doing this along the way. You can just draw an error from here to here. I mean, I can understand that it's just been twisted. It's the same compound, it's the same compound. I mean, how it's exactly drawn doesn't really matter in your mechanism. Just like this. I mean, if you want to do it like that, or if you see that you need to turn it and just redraw it at some point like this, everything's good. No matter how you draw it, it's, it's using correct arrows to show all electron movement and along the way correct structures. Correct structure doesn't mean it has to be drawn like this. Exactly. It's like draw a hand on the board. Okay? And I draw it and I say, no, I really wanted the pointy finger to be pointed to the right. Why does it matter? It doesn't matter. Or you can say, well you didn't tell me that. I drew the right hand. Is that not a right hand? Yeah, it's a right hand. I can't say anything else. Also, I, if I say draw the right hand on the board, and maybe you drew it with the palm forward. <coughs> I didn't tell you not to. Right? You can draw a right hand. As long as it's the right hand. Now, if you draw a left hand when I ask you to draw a right hand, then you're going to be wrong. How is that a six-minute ring if the oxygen is removed? So there's a Well, here's your ring. It's got no atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, atoms, not carbons. Okay. I didn't say six. I didn't say six number carbon ring. That's a six number carbon ring. Okay. This is a six number ring. It consists of five carbons and one oxygen. Oh. It's called a heterocyclic ring. It's a hetero atom. Okay, guys, we'll take a two minute break and then we'll start with uh, resonance, new material.
she also wants to jerk. Yeah, what do you do? When you get back home, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is kind of O A C C O N C C. Yeah. C C C. Yeah. It's just like not. It has to literally be like exact. Okay. So
because then you'd have a carbon with five bonds. But guess what? Those p orbitals are interacting. They're right next to each other. They are. What you have there is you have a single pi system that consists of four p orbitals all interacting where they're all conjugated. And we'll continue and advance that discussion, but right now that's what I'm trying to get to. Four p orbitals all lined up, four p orbitals conjugated. What we say is the two double bonds here are conjugated. What about over here? Are these two conjugated? No. Well, we already see that it says none. But why not? Is this pi system lined up and interacting with that pi system? No. This really becomes one pi system of four sort of toy soldiers lined up there. Over here. Are these two center ones interacting? No. No, they're too far apart. <coughs> There's a carbon in between. Does the carbon in between have a P-O? No, the carbon in between is sp3, no P-O. This kind of breaks the conjugation. You got two separate pi systems here. They're not conjugated to each other. Okay? We're looking at the P orbitals. one step at a time. We need to be very clear on what we just said. Anybody confused or not missing something right now? Or is this okay? pretty straightforward? Well, we need to really know that. And then we're going to take that and we'll advance it to a more and more involved discussion of resonance. Okay? What about stability of conjugated? Which one's more stable? Well, I'll give you H of H numbers. Remember H of H? This can be hydrogenated with H2, and you can reduce both alkenes. They both became, become the same product. If you reduce both of these alkenes, both of these will give you pentane. But this one releases more energy. Why? Because it contains more energy to begin with. And something that contains more energy, we would call it less stable. The non-conjugated non -conjugated diene is less stable. We, we, we see that from experimental values. Thus, which one is more stable? Conjugated diene is more stable. That's what these tell you. Guess what? Conjugation is a good thing. Conjugation is a stabilizing factor. Because what we have here is we have extra pi bonding in one of these molecules. Between two and three, that's extra p orbital bonding. Bonding is typically a good thing. It's a stabilizing thing. You got to see that that's there. Because unless you consider all those p orbitals, do you see the extra pi bonding between carbon two and three? You got to know it's there. Okay. Uh, this over here is called accumulated diene. Is it conjugated? It says it's not. Right. Okay. I'll see. I've already <coughs> What is the structure of this over here? What's the hybridization of the central carbon here? SP3. SP. SP. How many pure bills does the central carbon have? Okay, see these are the questions which you should be, you should be okay, coming quick. Uh, if we, can you draw the pi system here? You've got a central carbon. It's got two p orbitals. Well, guess what? Over here, this carbon, both of these are sp2. They have one. That's pi bond on one side. Is the pi bond on the other side 
the other p orbital. Is the other carbon p orbital conjugated with these two? Because the other carbon has a p orbital. It's actually not. This one has two. How is the second one here positioned compared to the first? Perpendicular, as you should have learned in Gen Chem. P orbitals are perpendicular, sometimes called orthogonal. Okay? The other one is perpendicular. The other one's coming out. Okay? Hard for me to draw it. I'll kind of draw it like this, maybe. That's not a good representation, but it's like it's coming straight out. And going back. Okay, here's the board. Half coming out. It's like this. The other one's like that, which is straight up and down, but the second one is like this. Because that one's like that, this one's also like that. And this is not a good representation. It's better to hold my uh, here. Uh, this is where we can do something like this. I had a third hand, that might help. And maybe I can see here, and if you need to stand up. Here's the center carbon. The center carbon has pure bowls like this, two that are perpendicular. Okay? Consider that one there like that. Can, you, can anybody see that? That's, how, that's what you got here. You got two pure orbitals like this. And then you got two p orbitals like this. Because the central, the central one has two p orbitals like that. The one over here is like this to interact with one of those in the middle. But the one over here is like that to interact like that. So here you go. Okay? That's how the p orbitals are. Are, these four, are all these four conjugated? No. These two are, and these two are. But they're not conjugated to its, itself because if you're turned, to be conjugated means full overlap. These on the side would have to be like this. Now you've got four. But that's not how this is. These two are like that, perpendicular to the other two. This is called cumulated. It's a good sort of structural exercise to consider all this. But it all goes back to basic hybridization and pure rules. Um, okay? It should not be anything crazy. Crazy odd. It just requires you to see it and gather all your thoughts on it. It's not conjugated. The two double bonds are not conjugated. It's, it's kind of unique. I don't think we've ever seen a carbon double bond like this. Double double bond. Uh, then you have benzene. Benzene is a fully conjugated cyclic system. Every atom has a pure. Remember definition of aromatic? Every atom in the ring has a p orbital. Indeed, it does. And all six p orbitals are overlapping. Okay? It's like this. If you draw the, the benzene ring p orbitals, there's four, okay, five, and six. They're all six overlapping. It's the granddaddy of, of aromatics. Um, I'm not going to talk about it a lot here. In organic 2, we really look closer at the benzene, the aromaticity. Um, because the term aromatic is where you take sort of resonance and it, it kind of bumps it up a notch to even more something else. Uh, and aromatics are always going to be cyclic rings. Okay, a closer look at conjugation. We sort of did it here. Let's ask a question. Same compound is there. I just removed the methyl. And by the way, is there a p orbital on that end methyl? No. Okay. <clears throat> uh, how many p orbitals are in the conjugated system here? Well, that's easy, right? There's four, right? 
It's the same as above, we just lost the knuckle. Number of peak orbitals in the conjugated system, four. How do they pi electrons here? How many electrons in this pi system? Each p orbital has how many electrons? One. Each p orbital has one, and these two are interacting. One electron interacting with one electron to make a bond, a two electron covalent bond. One electron in this orbital, one electron in that orbital, make a two electron covalent bond. So you know, you know that, but you just don't know you know that. You know what a covalent bond is? Okay. You have to know this. Well, there's one electron here, one in that makes pi bond. How many pi electrons in the pi system? Four. There's four. Okay. Uh, molecular orbital view. Uh, I don't know what I want to do here. This is, I kind of have this here so I can draw the p orbital zone, and I've already done this twice. I'll just say, molecular orbital, once we have conjugation, this really becomes one system. And really the electrons are now spread all through here. What's a molecular orbital? Well, what's, what's another type of orbital? Another type is an atomic orbital. Usually when we say orbitals, we don't say atomic orbitals. But aren't these p orbitals, isn't that an atomic orbital? Isn't that an orbital on an atom? Mm -hmm. Got four atomic p orbitals. All conjugated. Well, what is a molecular orbital? A molecular orbital is one that's not just on an atom, but it's spread over the entire molecule. Can you imagine one orbital over an entire molecule? That's what a molecular orbital is. Molecular orbitals are formed by interaction of atomic orbitals. But guess what? You only do this in advanced classes. Well, we're going to move into it. In organic 2, you'll we'll do molecular orbitals of benzene and aromatics. But here's what I'm telling you again. Once it, a conjugated system, once it becomes conjugated, it becomes one system. And really, it's almost like hybridization of, you know how we hybridize atomic orbitals to make hybrids? Like an sp3? That's still an atomic orbital though. Imagine taking orbitals and hybridizing it with other orbitals in the molecule, and you get this new orbital that comes from mixing all your atomic orbitals. You can do that, and that's called a molecular orbital. All right? You can read about that a little bit. I don't think I'm going to mention much more here other than saying it becomes one system. This is one system consisting of uh, four P atomic orbitals, but really it becomes one molecular orbital kind of. Uh, it, it remains, it's, there's four pi electrons in this one conjugated system. Yes. Uh, we'll mention that a couple of times, and then we'll finally dive into it deeper. Resonance structures. <coughs> you need to be able to draw them. You also need to know, understand what, what do they mean? What, what are they? It's a more common way to show what's going on. In this approach, we show multiple Lewis structures for the same compound, with only pi electrons moved. With the idea that the true structure is an average or composite or hybrid of the various structures we can draw. We've done this before. It's the idea of like, I'm trying to say, hey, the compound's pink. Pink can be hard to draw. So instead, I'm going to draw red and white. And then say, hey guys, the true color is a blend of red and white. Can you imagine a blend of red and white? What does it look like? Pink. Okay. 
It's the same idea. We're going to draw two structures, or maybe more. We may draw three or four, and then I'll say, hey, guys, the true structure is a blend of all these. Okay? Well, what structures can we draw here? First off, it's a little bit difficult here. I'm starting with neutral compounds. It's actually easier to draw resin structures of charged compounds. But I'll do it here. Basically, what do we move when we draw resonance structures? I underlined it over. Only pi electrons. Do we have any? Yes, we talked about that here. Let's move them. How can we move them? All right, there's different ways we can move them on our paper or on the board. What if I take these and just move them here? What am I doing here? Here's a pi bond. Somebody grab the, the pi bond and just move it here. And it becomes what over here? It becomes a long pair over here. That's what I'm doing. And that arrow movement gives what? Long pair here. Now, pi bond is just being yanked back to the atom to be a long pair. Well, now we got charge over there. What's the charge of this carbon now? It just lost a bond. That's positive. How many H's on that carbon, by the way? One. One. Still one. <coughs> but it's questions like that, which hopefully you know we're comfortable with and we don't have to struggle with that, which you would have struggled with on day one or two. All right? Well, there's golden rules of resonance, and I provided them free of charge in the back of this handout. And one of the golden rules of resonance is that all resonance structures have the same net charge. This is net neutral. So that better be net neutral. Huh. Now what's positive? What are we missing? This is now minus. How many H's on the end carbon? Two. Two. There's two H's there. If you can do a formal charge, you'll see that's minus. Here we go. Let me ask you, there's another little structure. It is a little structure. Did I only move pi electrons in, in going to that structure? Yes. So that's a resonance structure. We did not move any atoms. That's another goal of moving resonance. You never move atoms. Only pi electrons. OK? Now we can ask, which structure do you like better of these two? I like this one because it, uh, carbon has an octet over here. There's no charge. Charge separation is higher energy physics. So this is better resonance, but that is a resonance structure by definition. Again, once we move forward, things will become more kind of useful a little bit. It's like, why are we drawing this to me a little bit? Okay. Let me ask you this. Can you draw another resonance structure? <coughs> Can we like do something else here? And by the way, this is a resonance arrow. Double-headed resonance arrow. What type of arrow is that? It's actually two. What, what is this one? This is equilibrium. Resonance is not equilibrium. Let me ask you this. Is pink an equilibrium between red and white? No. When you see something pink, is it sitting there going back and forth between red and white? No. It's not an equilibrium. It's just pink. This is red and white, and the true structure is just pink. It's somewhere in between. It's not exactly in between. It's closer to that. What's that better? We'll keep it. This is equilibrium. Sometimes this is drawn with one arrow with one end like that and one end like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Seen that before? Yeah. Those are the same. Resonance arrow is a double headed like this. Got to use this right arrow. Can we do something else? Well, we could take these electrons and move them there, but that would just take us back here. Mm -hmm. And on day one, if we had to do this, we'd say, hey, this carbon needs a bond. Can it get a bond? Can anything share? Well, yeah, we could ask this to share, and we could get this. Can we go another way, though? You can actually use the electrons over here. 
And I call this the old uh, windshield wiper method. Okay, your windshield wiper goes back and forth like this. Yeah? We can take this over here and just windshield wiper it over here. Now this is the pi bond moving from here to over here, to between here, you'll see. And this gives what? The pi bond is now here. See, it just windshield wiper over. See? Now what's here? Actually, a positive now. If you look at it, and this is no different. And these arrow movements, I give them kind of names, and we'll do a few different arrow movements over and over and over. That's the windshield wiper. This is sort of just sort of electrons out. Windshield. Another resonance structure, all we did is move pi electrons. Okay? Uh, what else can we say here? Again, it's a little difficult to discuss this. Let's think about the hybrid. The hybrid comes from blending these. What if I told you there was double bond character between these two carbons? We've already explained that two ways. First off, remember up here where I told you there's overlap between the pure rules of those two? There's, there's actually some pi bonding. Well, that's double bond character. But we also see it from our resonance structures. Because all these contribute to the, to the blend. And what do you see between the two carbons here? You see the double bond character between the two? This is the way we, we talk about this. Again, this is first example. We do this over and over and over and it becomes more clear. Okay. Resonance hybrid. Let's ignore the partial charges. Um, the resonance hybrid for this molecule looks like well we'll do it, we'll do it by this this method. Look at the bonding between. Here you see between one and two double bond, but here it's single bond, and here it's single bond. What is the blend of, or the average of double bond and single bond? 1.5. If it's exactly each, it's, it's 1.5. This is sort of double, single, single. The answer is somewhere between one and two, okay? And we're not going to get specifically, but it's, it's, not, it's not one, it's not two, it's somewhere in between. So we do something like this. That's like a bond and a half. Question? How, how do you know how many like, different resonance structures you can make? Uh, on your working on, your, on the paper, you would just keep drawing until you can't draw anymore. Okay. Using your arrow movement that we're going to be doing. And at this point, can you draw another? We'll, we'll learn. Well, I'll, I'll also tell you we're going to focus on positive. Let's keep going and we'll answer some of that. This is still intro. There's many things. We're doing a little bit at a time of different things here. Right now we're looking at the hybrid and we're assessing our resonance structures. Uh, okay. We see that we got the, the true bonding between here. What do we call the bonding? Bond order. It's probably written here. The bond order between the first two carbons is somewhere between one and two. What's the bond order between the second, the second, third? Well, here it looks like single, single, but there it looks like double. So it's somewhere between single and double. And we're just going to do it like this. It's it's sort of bond and a half, or somewhere a bond in something. Well, what's the bond order between the last two carbons? Double, double, but single. What's a blend of double, double, and single? Somewhere between double and single. Here we go, guys. 
Go back to the top a little bit. What do we say? We have one pi system. How many electrons in the pi system? Two. Four. They're spread out all in that single pi system. There they are. They're, you see them spread out there? That's four electrons spread out in, in, over the four p orbits. If you could look at this compound, it would look kind of like that. Well, guess what? This is called this is called the hybrid. And by the way, I'm not showing any charges here because it's a little bit difficult at this point. Not complete. Now, why don't we just always work with hybrids? It's like you're always trying to say we're going to work with red and white, and someone's like, well, why don't we just work with pink? Why do you keep just saying it's pink and but we work with red and white? The reason is red and white are easier to work with. Imagine doing a mechanism with a hybrid. What electrons are you going to move? It, it, it's kind of cumbersome. A hybrid is the true thing. It's easier to work with red and white. These are like red and white. These are easier to work with. The hybrid is the pink thing. But it's got all these partial bonds and stuff. Okay, you get that? All right. Uh, let's move below. Major, minor, we kind of looked at it. Of the three we drew, which one's major? This one. Isn't that the best structure? The major is just your best structure. It's got more bonds and it doesn't have charges. Uh, bond order. Uh, stick with either whole number or half. No, Alex? 1.5 is good. You don't have to say 1.7 or anything. <coughs> Just whole number of half. Okay? It may not be exactly 1.5, but whatever. And we're back. Okay, homework. Answer the answer the questions there. Questions moving forward. But now let's look at charge species. These are a little bit easier to, to work with. A little bit more intuitive of what you need to do. And now I can ask this question. How do you stabilize a positive charge? Do you move electrons towards it or do you pull them away? You move electrons towards it. So a positive wants electrons. Things want to become more neutral. Okay? Can you move electrons towards this? Well, we did in the pre look right here. We did the same thing in the previous example, you just didn't have the minus on the end. Okay? So we can do the old windshield wiper. Now what does that give? The double bond is now where? There. Where's the positive now? There. Is that a resonance structure? Mm -hmm. Yes, we only move pi electrons. By the way, this is called the allylic cation. You got an alkene, it's a carbon binding to an alkene. It's called allylic. We may never see that again until maybe near the end of organic two, and I'll say, remember allylic cation? Okay. Can you draw another resonance structure? No. I mean, do you have any other electrons? No, you cannot. That's it. The only thing I can do is windshield wiper back, but what would that do? I just come back here. That's two resonance structures. Let me ask you, which one's major? They're identical in this case. What does the true structure look like? The true structure is a blend of these. The true structure is a hybrid. See, this one's going to be a nice discussion. This is going to fall into place and look. Okay? Exact bond orders and things. What's the bond order between the first two carbons? Is it single or double? It's a blend of these. And what's a blend of single and double? One. This is a perfect blend of 
single and double is 1.5. How do we draw 1.5? Like that. And here I'm going to say BO equals 1.5. Because this is a perfect blend of a single and a double. What's the average of 1 and 2? 1.5. Okay? What's the bond order over here between the other two carbons? Well, this is red and white. What does the blend look like? Uh, charge. Here was charge is going to look good here, be nice, or be correct here. What's the charge on this carbon? It's just a blend. We got a plus one and a neutral. What's the average of plus one and neutral? Plus one. Positive 0.5. What we do here is just partial plus. We're not going to say 0 0.5 plus. It's just partial plus. What about over here? Also partial plus. What's the net charge of this thing here? <coughs> the two partials pluses add up to a full plus. Uh, it's a full plus. We showed that over there. This thing is fully positively charged. But guess what? Which carbon does the charge sit on? Does it sit on just that one? That's the original structure I drew. No. The charge sits on both. It's, it's part charge on both. And what we can say here is the charge is delocalized. It's not localized on just that carbon. It's delocalized over two different carbons. And charge delocalization is a good thing. If we can spread the charge out and delocalize it, it's kind of like me putting force on this desk, uh, on this floor right here. If I put a tremendous amount of force right there, it'd probably break that tile and just shatter it. But if I spread that force over the entire room, it may not shatter any of the tiles. The, the force has been spread out. It's kind of like that. Charge is sort of thing. You might say, well, isn't charge separation bad? It's, it's, it's a little bit different than that. It's more than that. Charge delocalization is a good thing. It's a stabilizing thing. And we say in here that the analytic cation is stabilized by resonance. It's stabilized by charge delocalization. If you can look at it, you'll be disappointed. It won't look like that. If you could actually see this cation, it would look like what? It would look like this over here. But guess what? It's got that crazy partial bonds, which is cumbersome. This is a hybrid. That's what it truly looks like. Which bond is longer? The first two carbons or the next? Which bond is longer? Well, we learned that... Well, you can base it on hybridization. Which bond is longer? Who says the first one? Who says the second one? Who says they're the same? They are the same, because this is the true structure, and the bond order is, is tells you the bond length. Okay? The bonds are the same length. That's a very symmetrical molecule, the charge is delocalized. This is consequences of resonance. Uh, mainly because uh, there's no major minor. Equal contributors. Uh, this is called the benzylic cation. Benzene ring is the carbon next to the benzene ring. That was next to an alkene. Benzylic cation, we can do resonance there. And in this case, there's going to be more than one resonance structure. You'll, be able, you'll see that you can keep going. Do one at a time and then say, can I do something else? Eventually, you'll if you do something else, you'll get back. You draw resonant structures of this. Uh, we may not have time to, probably not going to have time to do that. So instead, I'll let you do that on your own. Let's look below. What's down here? 
B, stabilization by a lone pair. Well, what was A? That was stabilization by a pi bump. Down here, stabilization by a lone pair. We have a carbocation because we're doing two cations. Here we got lone pairs next door. Can you draw a resin structure here? How do you stabilize the cation? Move electrons. electrons towards it. Are there any electrons you can move towards it? Yes. Yes, these electrons can just move in here as a pi bond. What does that give? have same net charge. This is positive. That should be positive. Positive is down here. That is a resonance structure. You see the charge has been delocalized. Because if we start drawing blends, you're going to see that the blend has some charge now on oxygen. The resonance structures tell us what the blend will look like, but we don't even have to look at the blend. We see the charge is some of all, some is on oxygen. Uh, other things, let's finish up here real quick. Which is major? Which is minor? These are different. Which is best? This is major. Why? That's a better structure. Why is that better? Because oxygen is more likely to have the charge on it. No, but oxygen doesn't like positive. Oxygen likes the negative better. So, so the positive oxygen is actually a bad thing. What is the good thing about that? More bonds. Everybody agree the one on the right has got more bonds? We just made a bond in doing drawing. We made a pi bond. Another reason. Everything has an octet. All octets. Over here, you've got an atom with no octet. Atom with no octet. Over here, the oxygen has an octet too. Oxygen doesn't mind being positive as long as you've got an octet. Uh, that's major. This is minor. We'll pick up here. Hybridization is oxygen. High system. How many, how many p orbitals? High electron. So the structural considerations. Uh, we're going to have to review 230. Anybody here 230? Okay. See, see here 230. Right here in this room.